Thank you for always watching. This is Hiro from Chirax Japan. The content of this video is like this. Anyways, let's get started. Was the Japanese sword not used in actual combat? Most of the weapons with attack power were bows, guns, spears, and slingshots. And there were few attacks with swords. Japanese katana or swords were only used to contribute about 10%. To the overall combat effectiveness. Why is the Japanese sword curved? The design was ingeniously developed to enable cutting with less force. In mounted warfare, it was easier to attack by sliding the sword sideways than by thrusting it. This required a slicing motion that followed the curve, and adding curvature to the sword improved. Its sharpness also when drawing the sword from its scapegoat. A curved sword was more efficient because it took less time to draw and put away than a straight one. Why are Japanese kitchen knives so sharp and diverse in type? Craftsmen who used to make Japanese swords became unemployed due to the Meiji Restoration's ban on swords. And some of them turned to making kitchen knives. As a result, the technology of Japanese swords was incorporated into Japanese kitchen knives. Why did samurai not use shields and grip their swords with both hands? Firstly, they used the large slips of their armor as a substitute for a shield, blocking and deflecting enemy attacks with their slips. While guarding with their sword, as full body armor developed, the need for a separate shield diminished. Furthermore, from the Kamakura period onwards, archery became the main form of ranged combat, and using both hands became necessary, making it impossible to hold a shield. Even during the Muromachi period, spears were commonly used. Requiring the use of both hands, the sword itself was heavy and difficult to handle with one hand, making it unsuitable for practical combat. Why are ninja swords short and straight? Ninja used them as stabbing weapons and also as a substitute for a walking stick. They were useful for climbing over enemy walls. Since the ninja were spies, it was important for them to escape after their intelligence gathering missions. Therefore, the sword was made compact, about 40 centimeters long, so as not to hit obstacles and hinder their escape. Where are Japanese swords made? There are five major schools of Japanese sword making Bizen, Okayama Prefecture, Yamashiro. Kyoto Prefecture, Yamato, Nara Prefecture, Mino, Gifu Prefecture, and Soshu, Kanaga Prefecture. Among these, the town of Bizen Osafune in Okayama Prefecture became a major production center for Japanese strong swords. Nearly half of the 111 national treasures of Japanese swords are Bizen swords. Famous historical figures such as Oda Nobunaga, Sakamoto Ryoma and Uesugi Kenshin were known to have used Bizen swords. What is the difference between Kendo, Raido, and Batodo? Kendo focuses on how to defeat an opponent after drawing the sword and facing them. Raido focuses on what to do when attacked while the sword is still sheathed, or when attacking while the sword is being sheathed. The practice mainly involves training the form of the sword, but Todo is similar to Raido, as it also focuses on attacking opponents after drawing the sword. However, it also involves cutting practice on tatami mats. Since the emphasis is on cutting practice, it is recommended to first learn the basics from Raido. Thank you everyone. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Now let's move on to introducing the history of the sword. Yayoi period. 
straight swords with straight blades have been excavated from archaeological sites. It is believed that they were introduced from the Chinese mainland. At the time, there were no weapons that could instantly sever the human body like a sword, so that the sword was regarded as a sacred object and was dedicated to the gods. Interestingly, there was a powerful force in the Izumo region, now Shimane Prefecture, that possessed a large number of technologically advanced metal weapons. This region was called the ancient Izumo Kingdom. At the Kojindani Iseki site in Izumo City, Shimane Prefecture, 358 copper swords were excavated from the Yayoi period. These copper swords were 50 centimeters long and weighed 500 gram. Kofun period. In the Kofun period, double-edged straight swords were common. Straight swords without a curve and decorative tachi swords with a sheath decorated with gold, silver, and copper were in the great demand. Some swords had characters inscribed on their blades. During this period, swords were not just weapons for battle, but symbol of the wealth and authority of nobles. They are also called ancient swords. Most swords during this period were either hirazukuri, with both sides of the blade flat, or kirihazukuri, with a cutting edge. There were also some interesting discoveries during this period. In January 2023, a wavy sword with a total length of 237 cm was excavated in the Tomi Omaruyama Kofun tomb in Nara Prefecture, which caused a sensation overseas as well. The reason why the kanji character for snake was used to describe its waviness is that the sword was as meandering as a snake. But why did a snake shape become a sword? At the time, snakes were revered as gods. The reason was that snakes were worshipped as gods of abundance, because they eat mice and protect rice during the rice cultivation season. Also because snakes shed their skin repeatedly, they were regarded as symbols of regeneration, immortality, and holiness. Heian period. The tachi, a sword with a curved blade on one side, was introduced. As mounted warfare became more prevalent, a sword that could be drawn easily from horseback was in demand. This is the time when the prototype of the Japanese sword was developed. The oldest known Japanese sword, the Kohoki sword, has been found and is stored at the Kasuga Taisha Shrine in Nara Prefecture. In addition, during this period, legends of a divine sword from Japanese mythology emerged. The story of the Kusanagi no Tsurugi will be explained in the later half of the video, but this sword was considered one of the imperial treasures passed down through the generations of emperors. Kamakura period It was a time of prosperity for the Japanese sword and the golden age of Japanese sword manufacturing. During this period, there was a rare emperor who devoted himself to sword making. His name was Emperor Gotoba. He gathered sword craftsmen from all over the country and focused on sword manufacturing. He also created a system for making swords called Goban Kaji. In addition, sword craftsmen schools were born in various parts of Japan and competed with each other. This emperor even designed the chrysanthemum emblem himself and carved it into a sword. Amazingly, this chrysanthemum emblem is still used by the Japanese imperial family today in the form started by Emperor Gotoba. By the way, if you're curious about the fate of Emperor Gotoba, it was introduced in a previous video, so please check it out if you want. Finally, Famous swords of this era included the national treasure 
Tachimei Norimune and the Imperial Property Onimal Kunitsuna, the sword of Tachimei Norimune is kept at Hiei Shrine in Tokyo, and the sword of Onimal Kunitsuna is managed by the Japanese government's Imperial Household Agency. Both are famous swords made by famous sword craftsmen of this era. Nambokcho period. During this period, the shogunate had collapsed and conflicts were erupting all over the country. Battles became prolonged and group fights on foot became the mainstream, requiring longer swords to mow down many enemies. Thus, swords longer than 1 meters were made and were called odachi. They were worn on the back instead of at the waist. The odachi that was introduced here was said to have a total length of 465 centimeters, making it the longest sword in Japan, which was made during the Edo period and was called Hajano Ontachi. It is still a mystery how it was handled. Murumachi period. During the collective infantry battles of this period, more katana were worn with the blade facing upwards on the waist band. The blade length of the katana was around 63 centimeters. In the first half of the Muromachi period, a peaceful time, elegant swords were preferred as accessories. However, in the later half of the Muromachi period, a large scale civil war called the Onin War broke out throughout Japan over the issue of the shogun's successor. In order to meet the demand for swords, a large number of mass produced Japanese swords called Kazu Uchimono were manufactured. However, many of these swords were of poor quality and prone to breakage due to cost cutting measures such as using inferior steel. Additionally, a system was created to rent out cheap and shoddy swords called Okashi Gatana to foot soldiers and other low ranking troops. Finally, the increased demand for swords led to the establishment of iron works in various parts of Japan. Azuchi Momoyama period. During this period, famous daimyos such as Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi unified Japan and created a splendid and magnificent era with established regulations. Trade with Europe flourished and foreign made Namban iron was also used to make swords. Fighting methods shifted to using firearms rather than the Japanese swords. In addition, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a powerful daimyo during the Warring States period, issued the Sword Hunt Decree to prevent rebellions by armed pheasants and to clearly distinguish between samurai and farmers. The decree prohibited anyone other than samurai from carrying swords and confiscated the swords of farmers. As a result, the sword became an even greater symbol of status and value for samurai. Edo period. Japan entered a peaceful era without battles, and as a result, the demand for sword making decreased significantly. The value of Japanese swords as weapons declined, and they became more associated with art and gifts. In addition, a system called the Buke Shohato, or the laws for military houses, was established to maintain social order. This system restricted the length and ownership of swords based on one's social status. Meiji period. When we think of a samurai, we think of a sword, don't we? But the era ended abruptly. It was due to the Haito Rei, the sword abolishment law that was enacted in 1876. The sword had been like a spiritual anchor for samurai. The sword disposal order sparked discontent among samurai, and they came into conflict with the government, which aimed to create a modern nation-state. The following year, Saigo Takamori, who led the army 
provoked a large-scale civil war in the southwestern region of Japan to resist the government. However, the government won the war in the era of samurai and the swords came to an end. However, the idea that the samurai spirit and teachings known as Bushido must be passed down to future generations was still essential. The Dai Nippon Butoku Kai was formed, centered on the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, and Kendo, the way of the sword, was established in 1912. In 1945, Japan was defeated in World War II and placed under American occupation. But after Japan regained sovereignty in 1952, Kendo was positioned as a sport and physical education. Since then, the spirit of the samurai has been handed down in Japan. Although there is no demand for Japanese swords as weapons, the art of sword making is still protected, and the technique of sword forging has been passed down to the present day. Types of swords Tachi, a sword with a straight blade and little curvature, excavated from ancient tombs. Katana, a sword with a curved blade and a distinctive shape used with the blade facing downwards in mounted combat. Blade length is about 70-80 cm. Odachi, a large-sized katana with a blade length of over 90 cm. Naginata, a long-handled sword with a blade length of about 150 cm, similar to a spear in terms of reach. Classified as a Japanese sword due to the curved blade at the tip. Uchigatana, a sword worn with the blade facing upwards. The length is about 60 cm. The act of drawing and striking with the sword is done in one continuous motion, making it suitable for infantry combat. Wakizashi, a sword with a blade length of about 30-60 cm typically used as a companion to the Uchigatana. Tanto, a short sword with a blade length of less than 30 cm, mostly made with a flat construction. What's distinctive about Japanese swords is their curvature and shinogi zukuri structure. Japanese swords are light and easy to handle, designed to increase strength. That being said, which type of sword do you think is the strongest? Personally, I think the Naginata with its long reach would be advantageous. However, it seems difficult to handle since it could also hit one's own allies. Main sword structure The sword consists of the blade, scapbard, handle, and tsuba. In other words, sword guard. Next, let's explain how Japanese swords are made. Tatara steel making. The term tatara refers to a tool used to blow air into a furnace to raise the temperature when melting metal. First, sand, iron, and charcoal are placed in the furnace for three days to create a lump of steel called kera. Within this lump, the world's purest iron with a carbon content of about 1% called tamahagane is produced. This process requires the skills of a craftsman who must work tirelessly for three days and nights, watching over the scorching frames of 1300-1500 degrees Celsius to produce tamahagane. It is said that the 10 kilograms of tamahagane is required to make one Japanese salt. The extracted tamahagane is later forged by pounding, burned to hardening, and undergoes several other processes, which will be explained in this video. Tamahagane is easy to process, so it has qualities such as tough, unbending blade, easy polishing, resistance to rust, and a beautiful harmon, in other words, temper line of sword blade, making Japanese swords unparalleled steel products. Mizuheshi and Kowari Mizuheshi and Kowari 
is the process of forging the Tamahagane steel, which has been hammered to about 3 mm thickness using a large and a small hammer. The steel is then cut into small pieces and stacked tightly together with washi, Japanese traditional paper, wrapped in straw ash and heated to approximately 1300 degrees Celsius to join the pieces. When the steel becomes thin, it is immediately quenched in water to prevent the temperature from dropping. Tsumiwakashi. In this process, the steel is heated to about 1200 degrees Celsius, so the center is lightly hammered with a large hammer several times to remove impurities and reduce the carbon content to about 0.7%. A chisel is inserted into the center of the jitetsu iron and folded in half about 15 times heating it to about 1300 degrees Celsius each time. This process creates multiple layers of more than 30,000, making the blade stronger. Hard steel making and combination. The core part of a sword with low carbon content is combined with skin steel with high carbon content on the outside to create an incredibly strong sword. Initial forging. The materials are heated and the sword is forged into a flat bar shape while boiling. This process serves as a guideline for the final dimensions of the sword. Shaping. The tip of the blade is cut diagonally and the sword is shaped by tapping it with a small hammer. This is a crucial step in determining the shape of the sword. Clay tempering. Using tools such as a file or a chisel, uneven parts of the steel are removed and the clay is applied thinly to the entire blade. Then a layer of thicker clay is applied. This process solves curvature. Yaki ire. Crunching. Yaki ire hardens the blade by giving it strength. To determine the temperature, external light is blocked and when it reaches 800 degrees, it is removed and quickly quenched in water. This process hardens the blade. The final step is to finish the blade to make sure it cuts well. This is a challenging process as temperature control is crucial. If the temperature is too high, the blade will crack. If it's too low, yakire will not be effective. During this process, the steel structure changes from austenite to martensite, and the volume increases, creating a curve in the blade. Finishing. Because there are differences in the steel's hardness, the final process expresses the beauty of the blade, such as the texture of the base metal and the pattern of the blade. The blade is roughly polished, the finished product is checked, and the maker's mark is engraved. Handling of Japanese salts to prevent rusting and to avoid breathing onto the blade. When Admiring a sword, show gratitude to the author, owner, and ancestors. In other words, show respect to other people's swords and do not insult them. Do not step or straddle the sword as it represents the soul of the samurai. Do not let the scabbards of the sword touch each other as it may lead to conflict. Do not draw the sword for no reason. This is a story from the Edo period but when samurais drew their swords, they were expected to be prepared for the consequences as samurai's responsibility. For example, like this. One day, a family of farmers living in a remote part of Edo were walking along a dark, eerie road at night. Suddenly, a man appeared and surrounded the family. Hey, give me your money. If you don't, I'll cut you down. The man threatened, brandishing two swords, one large and one small. The farmers were too scared to say anything and just stared in shock. Then they heard something approaching from the other side of the road. The man noticed it too, and with an 
eerie grin took a stance. As it turned out, the approaching figures were officials from the Edo shogunate. The man tried to escape, but was quickly caught. You're a street thrasher. You'll be drawn and quartered, the officials said sternly, dragging the man away. As the farmers began to relax and leave, one of the officials approached them. Be careful on the roads at night from now on. The Edo shogunate has decided to ban street thrashing and impose severe punishments, the official warned. The farmers knobbed deeply at the official's words. It was a time when walking the roads at night was scary, but gradually the incidence of street thrashing decreased as the Edo shogunate implemented increasingly severe punishments. This era, there were also samurai who did dangerous things at night. The actions of samurai who carried out indiscriminate attacks at night are called tsujigiri. Now next, I would like to talk about a Japanese myth related to one of the three ancient legendary treasures of Japan. Kusanagi no Tsurugi In ancient Japan, there were gods who lived in a heavenly realm called Takamagahara, watching over the human world. Among them, the most important was Amaterasu Omikami, the goddess of the sun who had the role of protecting Japan's land and people. However, Amaterasu had a brother named Susanoo who was known for being a troublemaker and a violent person. In contrast to his sister, one day he caused a commotion in Takamagahara and was banished to the human world by Amaterasu. In the land of Izumo, where he arrived after his banishment, Susanoo met an elderly couple who were mourning because they had to offer their daughter as a sacrifice to the eight-headed serpent Yamata no Orochi. Susanoo made a deal with them and saying that he would slay the serpent if they agreed to give him their daughter's hand in marriage. The elderly couple agreed and Susanoo prepared some strong alcohol to intoxicate the serpent before killing it. As he cut the serpent's body into pieces, he felt something solid in the tail section. It was the legendary sword Kusanagi no Tsurugi. With the acquisition of the sword, Susanoo's power was enhanced and he went on various adventures. Kusanagi no Tsurugi was later said to have been used by Emperor Jinmu, the first emperor of Japan, and became an important part of Japanese history. However, there is also a legend that the sword is cursed, and when drawn, uh, calamities such as natural disasters or illnesses befall its owner. Despite the ominous rumors, Kusanagi no Tsurugi has become an indispensable part of Japan's history and culture. Introduction of a legendary sword, Okanehira, a national treasure made by a swordsmith from Bizen area during the Heian period. It weighs 1.35 kg and has been lightweighted with almost no scratches. It also doesn't rust, even though it usually would. The sword making method is not clear, making it a national treasure that cannot be reproduced. This sword was held by warlord Ikeda Terumasa during the Warring States period. Its greatness attracted even Emperor Meiji who visited to see the sword in person. General Douglas MacArthur was also impressed by this sword and asked to buy it, but the Ikeda family, the sword holder, refused the offer to exchange it for the Statue of Liberty, according to legend. Later, the Japanese Ministry of Education bought it for 65 million yen equivalent to 260 million yen today. It is now displayed at the Tokyo National Museum, where it is exhibited once every few years. Cursed Sword Muramasa During the Edo period, an urban legend about the Cursed Sword Muramasa spread. According to the legend, the sword named Muramasa was rumored to be Cursed Sword 
that brought disaster to the Tokugawa shogunate. This was because Tokugawa Ieyasu's grandfather and father were killed with Muramasa's swords. Tokugawa Ieyasu was wounded by a Muramasa short sword. Tokugawa Ieyasu's family was forced to commit seppuku with Muramasa swords, and Tokugawa Ieyasu's enemies were fond of using Muramasa swords. The retainers feared the Muramasa sword and began to dispose of it. Those who possessed the Muramasa sword were considered disloyal to the Tokugawa family, and the people stopped wearing Muramasa swords on their belts in the town. People who feared the name Muramasa ground down the name on the sword blade, making it anonymous and overwriting it with another name, and as a result, it became said that the, if you possess a Muramasa sword, you will be cursed. Dojigiri Yasutsuna. The story takes place in the Heian period of Japan. Oni wa demons were rampaging through the uh, capital city of Kyoto. Minamoto no Yorimitsu, who was commissioned to defeat the Oni, was successful in slaying them. When he cut down an Oni named Shuten Doji, his sword was named Dojigiri. The sword was made by a swordsmith named Ohara Yasutsuna. Dojigiri has a strong curve and distinctive features such as Hada that resembles wood grain and Hamon with small irregularities. Its sharpness was so astonishing that in the Edo period, it was tested on the bodies of criminals. It is said that the six bodies were sliced through like a wheel down to the base. One can only imagine how much destructive power it would have had in battle. Nowadays, it is stored in the Tokyo National Museum and becomes a topic of discussion among sword and shoegists each time it is displayed. Sword used by Miyamoto Musashi, Mumei Kanehide. The most famous sword used by Miyamoto Musashi is the Kanehide, unmarked sword from the Nanbokucho period, with a blade length of 70 cm, a little curvature. The lack of inscription is due to polishing and may have originally had an inscription. Miyamoto Musashi is said to have used this sword in a battle against the Yoshikawa School of Martial Arts in Kyoto. It is also possible that he used a long sword called Ryokai. Now that I have introduced various swords, which sword do you like the most? Please let me know in the comments. And if anyone knows of interesting foreign swords other than Japanese swords, please also let me know. Uh, this channel covers various aspects of Japanese history, samurai, ninja, swords, and so on. And thank you very much, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Chillax.